Hey everyone, I'm Jake from JCAM Media and this is the 2022 version of What's in My Camera Bag. Let's get into it. All right, so real quick before we get started with the video, I just wanna to touch on a few things. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all back to the channel for the new year of 2022. Secondly, we sadly didn't hit our goal of 500 subscribers by the end of 2021. But hey, we still hit 400, so I'm counting that as a victory. And just so you guys know, that wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for all of you out there subscribing to the channel, so thank you. And finally, yes, I shaved, I have a mustache now, deal with it. All right, that's enough chit chat. Now let's get started with what's in my camera bag, starting off with the bag itself. And I've actually upgraded my bag since the last what's in my camera bag. The bag I use now is called the Think Tank Backstory 15. I got this bag back in September of 2021 and I mainly got it because I shot my very first wedding and I wanted to carry as much gear as possible because I didn't really know, know what to expect. And if I remember correctly, this thing costs around $209 on Amazon, which is a pretty good price considering how much it holds. Within this bag, I could probably fit two cameras and four lenses. So yeah, this thing holds a lot. Moving on to the next piece of gear, which is my main camera that I'm shooting on right now, the Canon 6D Mark II. I bought this camera about a year ago. I actually think it was back in February of 2021 and it's been a really great main camera. Some of the things I like about it, it's full frame, it has a variable articulating touch screen, you have the dual pixel autofocus, and that's Canon's famous autofocusing system. You can shoot in 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second, and also 24 frames per second, and 30 frames per second. And then some of the things I don't really care about when it comes to this camera, there's only one card slot, there's no 4K, and it doesn't have in-body image stabilization. Other than that though, it's a pretty good camera. Oh, also if you're looking to buy the 6D Mark II, Canon has it priced at $13.99 on their website right now, but I think you should be able to find it a little cheaper on Amazon. You can even find some used options, which is what I recommend. And I'll have links to all my gear down in the description below. All right, now onto my second camera, my backup camera, which is the Canon SL2. This thing was my first DSLR and it got me started in photography and video. I used it for about three years before buying my next camera, only because this thing I felt was holding me back just a little bit. That's not me saying that this is a horrible camera though. Some of the things I like about this camera, it can shoot in 1920 by 1080 at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. It has a 24 megapixel sensor, Canon's dual pixel autofocus, and even the size of this thing is just crazy because I'm pretty sure the body alone weighs around a pound. Some things I don't like about this camera, there's no 4K, the battery life is okay, there's no in-body image stabilization, and it can only shoot at five frames per second in photo mode. Anyways, if you wanna buy this camera, Canon doesn't make it anymore, so you can't find it on their website, but if you go to places like eBay or Facebook Marketplace, you should be able to find some cheap options on there. Also, they have a newer iteration of the SL2 out. It's called the Canon SL3. And that leads us into our next item, which is extra camera batteries. So for the SL2, it takes this battery, which is the LP E17, and I have three of them. And then for the 6D Mark II, it takes this battery, which is the LP E6, and I have three of them right here, but there's a fourth one in the camera. And the battery life on the LP E6 is much better than the battery life on the LP E17. All right, that's enough about batteries. Now onto the next item. The lens that I'm using right now on the 6D Mark II, which is the Sigma 24 to 70 f2.8. This lens is basically my go-to lens, and I use it for a lot of different things, but I would call it my all-around slash vlogging lens. It's pretty great. I like the 24 to 70 zoom range. It makes for a nice medium range zoom lens. And I also like the f2.8 aperture. That allows you to open up those aperture blades super wide, so you can let a lot of light onto the sensor and also get that blurry background. The only thing I don't like about this lens is, and I found this out a few months ago, the quality of it is not the best. I did an image quality test with this lens a few months ago. I actually made that into a video. If you want to check that out, I'll link it above in the card. 
Anyways, the lens, it didn't perform the best. A lot of the images came out pretty soft. So keep that in mind if you are looking to buy this lens for your Canon camera. Also, this lens isn't cheap. It comes in at around $1,099. And that leads us into my next item in my camera bag, which is this big lens, the Sigma 70-200 f2.8. I'll tell you what, I absolutely love this lens. I like the range from 70 to 200. It offers great compression in that range. Also, you have the f2.8 aperture for that blurry background. Now, I bought this lens and the Sigma 24 to 70 both at the same time around two years ago now. And for the most part, these two lenses are both really great. The only gripe I have with the 24 to 70 is that image quality. However, I looked up some videos about this lens too, and the image quality from this compared to that, this thing is amazing. Jared Poland from Fronos Photo actually did a test of this lens on the 6D Mark II, so that was perfect for me. And within that test, he compared this lens to the Canon version of this lens, and the images both looked very similar. And honestly, I haven't really had any issues with this lens. But if you are looking to buy this lens, it's gonna run you about $1,500. So it's not for everyone. All right, and now for the next item in my camera bag, which is the Canon EFS 10 to 18 millimeter 4.5 5.6 lens. Now this is an APS-C lens so I can only use it on the SL2. It's also the cheapest lens I have in my bag. But that doesn't mean it's horrible. I actually really like this lens when it comes to vlogging. It's nice and lightweight especially when you compare it to the lens I'm shooting on right now. Also it offers a pretty good range from 10 millimeters up to 18 millimeters giving you a pretty wide angle. And it also has image stabilization. The only two issues I have with this lens are probably the aperture range and the image quality. Besides that, it's a pretty good lens. Now, if you're looking for the price of this thing, it's gonna cost around $300. Up next, we have my ND filter. This one's just a stand-in because I'm using the one I actually use right now, which is the KNF Concept. 82 millimeter ND8 to ND 128. I actually just got this ND filter for Christmas and this is the first video I'm using it for and I think it's performing pretty well. So far some of the things I like about this ND filter, first of all it's a hard stop ND filter so when you twist it it's gonna have points where you can't go past. However with this one that I'm holding you can just keep twisting this one in a circle and there's basically no end. Another thing I like about this ND filter is the range. It goes from ND8 to ND128, which is a pretty good range for video. And finally, I just like the fact that it's a variable ND filter and not just a plain ND filter. This means that you can twist it and change the amount of light that you let in onto the sensor. Oh, also it comes with this case which is pretty nifty. And the price of this ND filter is pretty cheap. It comes in at around 80 bucks on Amazon. All right, and next up is my audio equipment. First of all, the microphone that I'm using right now is the Boya BY MM1 shotgun microphone. I use this microphone mainly for run and gun shooting and also for vlogging and recording in my car. The quality of it isn't amazing and that's partly because of the camera. I'm running it through my camera so it's using my camera's preamp right now, and most preamps on cameras aren't the best. However, if you're looking for a microphone that you don't wanna have to worry about turning on and off or putting a battery in, then this microphone might be the one for you. There is another issue I have with this microphone though, and it's not particularly with the microphone itself. It came with these hot shoe mounts and I broke both of them within like the first two days that I had the microphone. So what I did was instead of buying another two mounts made by Boya, I went to Amazon and searched for the Rode Video Micros shock mount and bought that instead. And I haven't had any issues with it. Anyways, if you wanna buy the Boya BY MM1 on Amazon, it's gonna cost you around 24 bucks. Now for my next microphone, the Zoom H1N. The main things I use this microphone for is to record sound effects and to plug other microphones into it and use this as a recording device. And the quality of the Zoom H1N is much better than the Boya BY MM1. Also, if you're looking to buy this thing, it's gonna cost you around 120 bucks. All right, next item on the list is my tripod, which is the Sunpack Travelite Pro, the same one I used last year. This is probably the next thing I should upgrade because this tripod is really cheap. And I've had it for a few years now, and I don't really trust it holding up my Canon 60 Mark II 
with the 24 to 70. So if you're a professional looking for a new tripod, I don't really recommend getting this one because it's not really made for full frame or bigger cameras. However, if you're a beginner, I do recommend getting this one because you're probably going to have a smaller camera anyways. And the only place I could find this tripod was on Best Buy's website, and it costs around $110. Now for the next item, which is SD cards. I have a bunch of SD cards. I only ever buy SanDisk though, and this one that I'm holding is a 64 gigabyte. I have two of these, and then I have two 120 gigabyte ones and the transfer speeds on these is 170 megabytes per second. If you do need an SD card, I do recommend getting SanDisk because they're a well-known brand and they are pretty reliable. In fact, I've never had a SanDisk card fail on me yet, knock on wood. Then after that, we have more extra batteries, but these are AAA batteries and they go to my Zoom H1n. Then we have a camera cleaning kit and I actually just got this for Christmas as well. So I haven't been able to use this yet, but it does come with an air blower, some microfiber cloths, and even some solution spray. Moving on, the next thing are step up rings. Now these are basically adapters for ND filters, polarizers, any type of filter that goes over the front of your lens that's too big for your lens. If you want the ones I have, these are made by a brand called Sensei and I found them on Amazon. If I can find the link to them, I'll link it down below. All right, let's wrap this video up with the last three items on the list. Hand sanitizer, pens, and two Allen wrenches. Now the hand sanitizer and pens are pretty self-explanatory as to why I have them in my camera bag. But the Allen wrenches, these are mainly for my tripod because the legs on it always get loose. So I gotta tighten them down with these things. All right, that's everything I'll be carrying in my camera bag for 2022. If you guys enjoyed this one and you wanna see more videos about photo and video, subscribe by clicking right there. Thanks for watching and always remember to capture great moments. Peace.